Oh, boys and girls, we have been in some great form. Only two shots on target in our last four games. We've just spanked Slavia Prague 10-0 in the Champions League. And today, we've played Norwich City in the FA Cup fourth round. And then our final group game against Napoli in the Champions League. Or Parthenope, as they're called in FM, unless you put in the name fix. Let's go and have a look. <laughs> Okay, so in yesterday's episode, you were with us for the games, the 4-0 win against Leeds and the 2-0 win against Wickham. Let's have a look at what we've done since you were last with us. While I'm doing that, please leave a like on the video. Really appreciate it. Always helps push the video out to new people. We played Newcastle in the Premier League. 4-0, we won that game. There was no goals conceded on target or shots on target from Newcastle in the entire game. An XG of 0.09 compared to our 3.74. We had 12 shots on target, 24 in total. Schmetz, Galay, Nuanieri and Van Persie with the goals in that game as well. Jeremy Doku, by the way, plays for Newcastle in this part of the game. He's 33 in game, which, you know, I think we're the 13th season in, in game, so he must be about 20, 21 in real life. Then after that, we played Crystal Palace in the Premier League, a 3 0 win. Alistair Bruce, Warren Zaya Emery, and Nick Jonas Schmetz. Got news on him to tell you about in this video as well. And yeah, I mean, Crystal Palace have changed their manager now. They've sacked John Terry. I can't remember, it weren't because of our result. I can't remember if it was before or after this game. Um, but basically, they lost to Brighton, and John Terry was their manager at the time. He's been sacked. So they're now on the lookout for a new manager. No, I'm not going back. In that game, I think there's no shots on yeah, no shots on target in this game as well. Yeah, no shots on target. And next year, 0.03 for them. Bearing in mind, they've got Duchesne, who was the top goal scorer in the league. I'm not sure if he still is. We'll have a look. Then we played Fulham and won 5-0. Nwanieri with a hat-trick. Nick Jonas Schmetz and Matteo Galay getting on the score sheet as well. Kenta Mahara picking up a bit of an injury there. But bear in mind, I mean, Nwanieri scored in that game. Scored in that game. He scored three in this game. And then we play against Slavia Prague and a 10-0 win against Slavia Prague. Three goals for Matteo Gillet, five goals for Ethan Nwanieri and Nick Jonas Schmetz with two goals as well. And I'll give you a, a, a little quiz question. Who do you think got man of the match? Now, bearing in mind, Nwanieri got five goals plus three assists in this game. But man of the match actually went to Palau. There you go. Three assists. Didn't score a goal, but three assists. If you're Ethan Nwanieri, I think you've got every right to be a bit cheesed off at that. You've got five goals and three assists and you don't get the man of the match award. It goes to your right back, Palau. But again, Slavia Prague, no shots on target. Um, an XG of 0.2. Well, they were terrible. They were absolutely awful. I mean, we were 5 0 up by 60 minutes, 6 0 up by 18 minutes. It was just ludicrous. I mean, by this point of the game, I was just laughing. Or by this point, the 18th minute, when we were 6 0 up, I was just laughing. I couldn't believe what I was watching. If we have a look at the Premier League table, we are two points ahead of Tottenham with two games in hand. We are four points ahead of Manchester City with one game in hand. And we are nine points ahead of Chelsea with a game in hand. Still relatively close, especially compared to other seasons as well. Shaquille Van Persie is the top goal scorer in the league. He's also top of the average ratings. Pataka is second on the average ratings. Restez is top of the clean sheets. Kenta Mahara has the most oh, has the second most player of the matches. Assists, all three are Arsenal players. Pataka, our right back with eleven. Nuanieri, our striker, winger, whatever position I'm playing him in, with nine. And then Palau is who's also the right back, the backup right back to Pataka with eight, which means in the league this season, we've had 19 assists just from right back. I mean, that is insane figures. If we look at the Champions League, we're top of that. We're level on points with Real Madrid. It doesn't really matter where you finish up here as long as you're in the green part. But Ethan Ranieri, top goal scorer in the Champions League, massively thanks to the five goals against Slavia Prague. He's also top of the average ratings and he's also second in the assists chart as well. 
So nine goals, five assists in the Champions League for Ethan Ranieri. It's safe to say he's having a fantastic um, Champions League this season. So all that in mind, everything is going rather well. We've been drawn against Norwich in the fourth round of the FA Cup. We've got Napoli in the um, Champions League, the final Champions League game. We did, by the way, the game against the 4-0 win against Newcastle was in the semi-final of the Carabao Cup. So the away game that's here should be pretty much a formality. And what we'll do is after we've played today's two games, it might be a bit of a case where we come back around the end of February for a Champions League knockout game and a league game somewhere. We might do something like Brighton and Southampton if they're not in there. But there could also be FA Cup games. It's a bit uncertain as to where we're going to come back for Friday's episode. But I did promise you transfer news. And that's what I'm going to bring you. So in terms of players in, Abubakari Varg, the striker, winger, free transfer person. He's confirmed, 27 years old. He's going to be coming in, joining on the 1st of July when his contract ends. Free of charge. It's cost us £1.1 million from the transfer budget. And that was basically an agent fee. In terms of players out, if we have a look at the transfer history, Warren Zaire Emery has gone on loan to Lazio. Now, it's a £1.3 million loan fee, but as you can see there, there is a mandatory fee after 15 appearances of £25.5 million. That's the upfront cost. They'll also be paying another £23 million in instalments. So it'll be just under, it's like £49.5 million in total. Bearing in mind, I mean, he's still an excellent player. He really is, four stars. But he's 29 years old. He's going to be 30 by the end of this season. His valuation is 39 to 47 million. And I just thought if we can get a fee for him and a decent fee, like just under 50 million, I can invest that in a wonder kid or two in the summer. So he doesn't really play a great deal for us. If we have a look, at his time with us, he's made six starts in the league. He has got four goals, to be fair to him. He's played a couple of um, cup games, one European start, but he's mainly been used off the bench. And we do have Roger Giardini, who's been complaining at not getting enough game time. So Giardini will now basically take Warren Zai Emery's game time as well as the game time he's getting beforehand. So that's basically the transfer news to bring you. Let's now get into the first game of the episode, Norwich City in the FA Cup. Southampton has just put Brighton out of it. Norwich, obviously they're doing very decently in the league, so they are a very good team. We have got a few injuries as well. Um, Loren Lorenko Pataka is still out injured. He's re resumes full training tomorrow. He could feature today if we wanted him to, but according to fitness tests, he'd only be able to do a maximum of 49 minutes, so I just don't really see the point we leave him out for today. Nicholas Oviedo has got pulled ankle ligaments, he's out for another week, and Shaquille Van Persie is out for another, or is out for a couple of weeks with damaged, a damaged foot. And yeah, that's basically it. So the team for today, Restes in goal, Chambers left back, Palau right back, Escalada and Kayunda in the centre of defence, Silva and Ochiong in the centre of midfield, with Alistair Bruce, Ethan Ranieri out wide, and Mahara in behind Nick Jonas Schmetz. We do have Borja Perez on the bench for today's game as well. Let's get into it. It's the FA Cup. It's the fourth round. We would like to go through, obviously. It's um, Cole J Jacob Hine in goal for Norwich City, former Arsenal player or current Arsenal player in real life. Um, yeah, we we've just been on sensational form. Our defence has been phenomenal. We're scoring plenty of goals. We're, we're just looking so good. And I, I don't want to curse the game today by saying that, but we, we just have been really, really phenomenally good. Here's Bruce, gives it to Mahar. I mean, we're steaming forward. It's got to be one. Oh my word, he's missed it. It was a save from the keeper, but that should have been a goal. Nwanieri will take the corner, in swinger towards the near post. Norwich can clear their lines and the highlight is over. Obviously, the fact we're at home today is also a big advantage as well. I do want to have a look actually at how many or what the attendance was for the game against Wickham because obviously for them that's going to be a massive game. Money-wise, it's going to generate so much money for them, especially if we get close to a capacity of 60,704 like we have today for the game against Norwich. 
who again at the moment have not had a shot on target, not even had a shot on goal, let alone a shot on target. We've had three on target, but not been able to make the most of it. Palau heads it back to Restes. We can build an attack from the back, which we are usually very good at doing. Here's Kayunda now, bringing it forward. I thought that was a bit of a loose pass there, but he just about managed to find his man. He gets it back again this time from Mahara, and it comes forward. He does like a little surging run forward, does Kayunda. And he finds Kenta Mahara, gets a cross in, and Nick Jonas Schmetz with his 16th goal of the season. He's kind of gone under the radar because of Van Persie and lately Ethan Wanieri. But yeah, stunning goal from, or stunning goal, it was a tap it. It wasn't that stunning, but it was a well-taken goal. But we get the next highlight and we have the ball. Escalada to Ochon. Gives it to Kayunda. Here he comes again, running forward. Gives it to Mahara. And Mahara scores 13th of the season. Probably a more difficult chance to finish than the one he had earlier on in the game. But that's 2-0. And we are approaching half time. We're into the 43rd minute now. Norwich have this highlight on their left-hand side. That looked like it went out. We've managed to defend it partially, but it's still bouncing about inside our box. I'd rather not concede before half-time, lads. And is that offside? Or is it just a throw-in? It seems to be a weird stoppage there. They have had a shot, at least. Not on target, though, compared to our five on target. And we've dominated possession, 74% possession as well. This really has been as one-sided as what I was going to say as one side as a game could be. I don't think that's true. I think Slavia Prague probably gets that one. Mahara, that's a penalty. Now, I'm not sure who takes that. I know Kenta Mahara's on the field, so it may well be him. Saka is above him. Escalada. I, was like, I know Escalada takes a lot of our penalties. But it looks like it's going to be Kenta Mahara that will take it. Chance for him to get his second of the game. The penalty has been confirmed by VAR. Mahara steps up against Carl Jacob Hine to make it 3-0. And he does. Beautifully taken penalty. Sends the keeper the wrong way. 14th goal of the season. A Japanese wonder kid. I, mean, I don't think he's a wonder kid anymore. I think he's too old to be a wonder kid. But he's certainly one of the best players in the world. I loved him from day one. I will always love him. He's my favourite new gen, regen, whatever you want to call them. Right, we can probably make a couple of substitutions now. I think we'll probably bring Jusic on for Palau, who's looking a little bit tired. Nikolic can come on for Joshua Chambers as well, make a change of both fullback positions. Giardini can come on for Bruno Silva. Make three changes. As I said before, when I made three changes, I don't often do that, but I think we can afford to here. Nuanieri with the corner. Pings about now with Mahara back to Nuanieri, and that was offside, I believe. Is it offside or a penalty? I think it's another penalty. Well, Mahara's going to get an opportunity to take his take a penalty for his hat trick. Yes, it is a penalty. For a minute, then I thought it wasn't. He goes into the other corner. Keeper goes the right way, but he can't get to it. Mahara with a hat-trick. Two penalties in the one match. And that's going to be lovely, lovely stuff. Right, who are we going to bring on? We're going to bring on Galay for Mahara. We'll take him off. Bring Saka on for Nuanieri. Just make them a couple of changes. It's been a very comfortable game. I mean... 4-0. And, I mean, Norwich have barely troubled us. I don't even know if they've had a shot on target yet. They'll probably have a shot on target here now. But we are doing so well defensively. My criticism of this tactic early on in the season was that attacking-wise, we were doing really well. But defensively, we were looking a bit dodgy, a bit iffy. But we haven't conceded in such a long time. Here's Nikolic to Giardini. We just about keep the ball. Jusic has it now on the right-hand side. Jusic, Amir Jusic, his first goal of the season. It's probably his first ever goal for us. Yes, it is. He's off the mark for Arsenal now. It's said down there. His first ever goal for Arsenal. And that's another goal contribution from the right-hand side. I'll tell you what, you want to play on the right-hand side if you're playing for Arsenal. 
especially at right back. Right, Norwich have a corner. Oh, and it's an own. Oh, I thought it was an own goal. But they've scored a goal, so they, they've obviously had a shot on target. But, yeah, two shots on target now. 5-1 we win. Comfortable afternoon. Disappointing to concede in the 93rd minute. Just as I was saying about how we've not conceded in such a long time. We, now we'll just say we've not conceded in the league in a long time. But, yeah, 5-1 win. We're through to the fifth round of the FA Cup. I'm not sure when the... Fifth round, the FA Cup fifth round draw is. Let's have a little looky. And fifth round, the draw will be made on 28th. So I'll bring you back for the draw for the FA Cup fifth round. Welcome back. Right, before we get to the FA Cup um, fifth round draw, I just, I'm just i going to put something on screen round about now of where we've had an email come through for a potential tycoon takeover. Now, I took the screenshot at the time thinking... I'm not going to end up using this because we get this come through at least twice a season that we're getting a, a takeover of some description. Not necessarily a tycoon one, but a, a takeover of some sort. And then it never comes to anything. And I just think it's pretty pointless putting that into a video every single time it happens because, like I say, you're going to be getting that two, maybe even three times a season. But just to show you that it, it does happen and we are getting it come through, I have put it on screen. Now, we have since had an email come through saying that these rumours are not to be believed. But we'll wait and see whether we get a Tycoon takeover or not. My guess is no, but I could be wrong. Right, let's get into the fifth round draw of the FA Cup then. 16 teams, I think, are going to be in this. Yep, yeah, 16 teams. So out of the teams that are still in it, I mean, we'd have no objection to playing Salford. Don't mind playing them. Bristol City, you know, any, any of the smaller teams we'll quite happily take. We'd want to avoid Tottenham, Man City, Liverpool, Newcastle if possible. They're probably about the only four teams I'd say we'd like to avoid. Not because I don't think we can beat them, but we'd just rather them get drawn against each other, really. So let's have a look. So Leeds are first out of the hat. They're playing Tottenham. Swansea are next out of the hat. They're playing Salford. So we're not going to get Salford. They're gone. Next out of the hat is Brentford. They will play Ar oh, Arsenal. There you go. We got it. So... Let's have a look at the draw in full. Brentford against Arsenal, Bournemouth against Southampton, Leicester against Man City, Watford or Everton against Liverpool. So could well be a North London, uh, North London, could be a Merseyside derby there. Palace versus Newcastle and Wolves versus Bristol City. There you go. That's the draw for the fifth round of the FA Cup. We play Brentford and now let's go and play Napoli. <laughs> Okay, so Napoli, here we are. We're at home. We have still got Shaquille Van Persie out injured. He's out for another 11 days, so basically two weeks. Nicolas Oviedo failed a fitness test. He doesn't resume full training for three days anyway, so he's out as well. We have made a couple of changes. Pataka is back in for Palau, and we've brought in Thiago Silva into the midfield in place of Madding Ochiong. We've got Restes in goal, Chambers left back, Pataka right back, Escalade and Coinda in the middle. Bruno Silva and Thiago Silva in the centre of midfield. Bruce and Ranieri out wide with Mahara in behind Nick Jonas Schmetz. Let's get on with this. Pretty much a meaningless game for us, this one. If we want to win the group, then we do need to win this game most likely because Real Madrid will probably win against whoever they're playing. But we have qualified. We have qualified for the group stage, uh, for the knockout stage of the round of 16. Um, as you see there, Man United, Barcelona have already qualified. I think Man City and Liverpool already have as well. And Bayern could overtake PSG or Celtic could go up there. Them teams drop points as well. But yeah, it's um, it's a pretty much a meaningless game for us. We don't need to win. I think Real Madrid have just taken the lead in their game. And I did debate whether to play. Palau or Pataka. Pataka is only fit for 75 minutes. So we will have to take him off before the 75th minute mark as I don't want to run him into the ground. But yeah, just thought we'd put a full team out, give him the game time. Here's Pataka now, gives it to Nwanyeri, cuts inside. What a beautiful finish. I'll tell you what, that angle for that goal shows just how good some of the in-game action can be of Football Manager, and they're meant to be having a new game engine for FM25. 
which if it improves it even more, I am all for it because the graphics often get a bit of criticism in Football Manager. Our, you know, personal craftsmen think if you want graphics, play FIFA. But yeah, that, that looked really good, the Nwanyeri goal. They get the cross into the box and they've headed over the bar. That Cavashivlio or whatever his name is, is still playing for Napoli. I don't know how old he is in game. I'm not going to click on him at the moment. But he must be like getting on now in game. He must be 34, 35 years old sort of thing. I'd be surprised if he's any younger than 33, like Jeremy Doku. Right, here's Patak on the right-hand side. Skips past his man. Can he get the cross in? He can. Oh, almost an own goal. Mahara with the header, but Bergstrom collects. Next highlight still with us. Here's Alistair Bruce. He's getting a bit of game time now. Some starts with... Oh, he's going over. To, he's done the little TV signal. He's going over to have a look at the at the monitor. This could be a penalty for us with an opportunity to make it 2-0. I don't know why he's looking over there when he's running towards the monitor, but he seems to be looking at the Napoli bench. Maybe the Napoli manager is saying to him, don't you dare give this as a penalty. And the referee has said, sorry, mate, but it is a penalty. So Mahara will step up. Chance to make it 2-0. He scored two penalties in the last game. And he scored in this one as well. Keeper did go the right way, but the 16th goal of the season for Kenta Mahara makes it Arsenal 2, Napoli 0. And we are firmly top of that group now. And I think we're approaching the hour mark, or being the hour mark. I think we'll take off um, Pataka for Palau. We'll give, that way we've given him an hour. And... I think that might be the only substitution we do make. There's nothing I'm crying out to do. So we just make that one substitution because we know we need to take him off. Restes collects the ball there. That was a bit of a dangerous moment. Is he going to do anything with it? There he goes. Gives it to Escalada. Gives it to Joshua Chambers. Here's Mahara now. Can he fashion a chance for us? He's gone quite wide. Gets the cross in. And it's a goal from Nick Jonas Schmetz. 17th of the season, an assist from Kenta Mahara. And I think we can call this the Kenta Mahara show now. Yes, we will confirm the change. Kenta Mahara has taken over in this game, he really has. We'll give another couple of minutes and then we'll make our next couple of changes. But we have the opportunity here. It's cleared by the Napoli defence. Kayunda has it, gives it to Palau. Back to Kayunda, who gives it back to Palau, to Thiago Silva, Kenta Mahara, Alistair Bruce. This is lovely passing and a lovely, lovely goal. Chambers with an assist. Schmetz thinks he scored. The referee is consulting VAR. It could well be disallowed, but it's not been. It's been awarded. It's 4-0. And we'll make our next few substitutions. Bruno Silva's looking a bit tired. He can come off for Giardini. I think we bring on Saka for Nwanyeri and I'll tell you what we'll bring on Borja Pires we'll swap him and Saka over leaves us one substitution to make should we feel the need to do so again Napoli have not had a shot on target at the moment we are just so good defensively I don't mean to bore you but I keep saying it but I do love a good defence but again, I think I've spoken too soon because I'm probably going to go and score now. Oh, we've hit a cross, but I weren't far off scoring. They've got the ball back again. It's the Georgian Messi at it for a moment. I think I was safer to call him the Georgian Messi than trying to pronounce his actual name. Saka now has it and brings it away, but the highlight comes to an end. They've still not had a shot on target, mind. They have a corner. They put the ball in. We partially clear our line without really clearing it. And now we have clearing. Borja Pires is forward. He hasn't really got anyone with him, so he's pretty much run out of ideas. But he gets the ball back again now. Gives it to Thiago Silva, to Giardini. Oh, and a misplaced pass, and they've scored. One shot on target, one goal. We need to eliminate mistakes like that. We really do. We don't want to be making them kind of mistakes. 
And it's so uncharacteristic. I think it's complacency is setting in, if I'm being quite honest. Here's Mahara to Saka. Back to Mahara. And it's over the bar for another corner. The Mahara show only has a few more minutes left. Saka will take the corner. Puts it into the box. Here's Mahara. Can't get it through the crowd of people. And the highlight ends. There's going to be four minutes of added time. The game that didn't really mean much has actually ended up being quite an entertaining one. Here's Thiago Silva to Chambers, but it's over the bar. And that should be all. And there you go, the full-time whistle has blown. A comfortable 4-1 win. Nice work, everyone. That was good. Let's have a look at our email. Everything seems fine there. We need to praise Schmetz. Let's give him all the praise he wants and needs and deserves. Right, looking at schedule, I don't know when we're coming back for tomorrow's episode. We've got, I'm not going to do the Newcastle Carabao Cup because there's only one game in between. So I think it will be around here somewhere. Um, we might do a Brentford FA Cup fifth round game. We'll see where, where the Champions League draw fits. Oh, I was around the 16s down here actually. So what we'll probably do is come back for maybe... Southampton and Newcastle, something like that. Maybe Newcastle, Brentford. We'll see. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you tomorrow for episode 35. Thank you very much. Bye.